Hey everyone, on today's episode of Huber Hype, we're talking about competitive first person multiplayer shooters. Oh. So it's been a hell of a week this week. We've got Halo 5 Guardians released for Xbox One, and we have the Overwatch beta released on PC. Just uh, a good time to be a fan of first person shooters. So, in honor of that hype, I'm gonna hype up some classic first-person multiplayer shooters on today's episode. Let's just get right into it. First up, we're going way back. Back to the beginning, back to my beginning. When it became about killing the enemy, killing my friends, not cooperating with them in any way, shape, or form, out for blood. GoldenEye 007. So this game came out in 1997. I was 10 years old. Now, up until this point in my life, the only real battles I had done against my buddies in multiplayer was stuff like Mario Party, or even Super Mario Bros. 1 versus mode, where you're hitting the POW block and you're trying to bop each other's heads. Just really, really a uh, heartfelt multiplayer. But then GoldenEye 007 came out and it really just changed everything. Changed my life. We've talked about it here in the past when I used to have challenges at my house. Open invitation, the door is open, step right up to the GoldenEye Express. People just come, we battle it out, shake their hands politely, just like Miyamoto wanted, and they would leave. There was just nothing like it at the time, just being shoulder to shoulder with your opponent, with your enemy. I mean, I'm rubbing shoulders with my brother, I'm rubbing shoulders with Brad Ellis. Up on the TV, I'm trying to shoot him in the face. So it was all fun and games with uh, my mom and my dad, serving chips and salsa in the living room. Got my brother, got Brad, got my other friends. Then Counter-Strike comes along. And now you are online in the war zone with people typing, Fuck you, hacker! I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna kill you! I'm gonna cut your head off if you ought me one more time! Whoa. Shit got real in the competitive gaming scene. Counter-Strike, hell of a game. Just, uh, to me, my opinion, two most balanced games ever released, uh, competitively. StarCraft Brood War? Counter-Strike, just perfectly balanced maps and weapons. And before you in the comments start talking about the op being OP, everything has a strength and a weakness, you know, a professional. You, ma you match up two professional players, one at the end of a hall with an op, one at the end of a hall with an AK. That AK can do a little Kali strafe, one shot to the head of the opper. Just a lot of balance situational weapons and I just love the value that it put on certain weapons too having to you know really go for the objective to try to win a match to earn more money to buy the weapon you wanted so I'm not a very competitive gamer I like my co-op like my single-player campaigns counter-strike is the only time in my entire life that I joined a clan and participated in clan matches. An entirely different vibe than a pug game in Counter-Strike, okay? You, you hop into a normal game, everyone's kinda just doing their own thing, they're working for the team, but really they're out, they're in it for their kill-death ratio, every, everyone that joins. But you go into a clan match, a five-on-five -five match of Counter-Strike, and the entire dynamic changes. The pistol round. Round number one, pure intensity. Five on five, pistols only, throwback to Goldeneye. Whoever wins this match traditionally wins the next one or two because of the economic value earned in that round. So just high stakes Counter-Strike. I remember we would practice, my good friend Ryan Teen, we would practice on the map Prodigy. And this is insane to me because I had been playing Counter-Strike for years but never realized these strategies. You would have 
two people go down into like some left tunnel area, you would boost one guy up into the vents, you would have a guy snipe long hallway, like they'd have really clever names, like, all right, I'm going long A, you're going short B, you're going up into the vents, just emphasis on teamwork and some of the most memorable competitive moments I will forever remember. So next up, again, I'm a, I'm a cooperative gamer. I like working with my team, I like working with my buddies. No game does it better than Battlefield. Oh man, there are just so many Battlefields to talk about, but we will briefly touch on just a, a few key elements of this franchise. First and foremost, uh, 1942, the, the original Battlefield game, I loved that there were just these B-2 bombers, okay? Remember, we're in 1942, the weaponry is, is inferior to modern warfare. So I can remember, you would have this B-2 bomber, and it could only hold a certain amount of people. But what we would do is we would lie down on the wings of the bomber. Just pure creativity in Battlefield, man. We're just getting warmed up. Settle in. Just pure creativity. We're all just lying down on the wings. We fly up. We take off. We're going to the enemy base. We got incoming fire from chopper planes or jets or whatever the hell. They're shooting at us. We're bombing their base. Super powerful, by the way. The B-2 bomber just destroys capture points. So we're going down, right? And we got people on the wings, people inside. Thing catches fire. Like 10 of us just jump off parachutes. 10 of us just descending down onto this base. We get down there. They got tanks. We got rockets. It's just all out chaos. And it's just an unscripted moment. It's one that we created ourselves. And that is what Battlefield is all about. You can play that franchise for 20,000 hours and still be shocked and surprised by the amount of creativity and chaos that happens at any given moment. And that game always makes me feel like part of a team. I'm just this little soldier in this huge war. It's not about me, it's about the team. It's about the squad. You know, we go to Battlefield 2, too. <laughs> the introduction of squads. The squad leader is the only one that your squad could spawn on. So the squad leader had a responsibility to the squad to stay alive. So when you were behind enemy lines, that squad leader, man, he better not go down. So you build your team around it. You know, you got your medics, you got your mechanic in case they roll up with the tank. Just the, the team compositions and and the, the high stakes and the pressure and the teamwork. That's what Battlefield is all about. All time favorite thing, throwing C4 onto a Jeep, driving the Jeep into the enemy base, ghost riding it, jumping out, watching it hurl at an enemy, detonate. Best. Okay, so no party lines on Huber Hype. We are not even an uneasy alliance. We are an alliance. Straight up, it's easy. Easy alliance. We got Battlefield, and we got Call of Duty. Call of Duty, hell of a franchise. Uh, you know, this came out at a time when Medal of Honor for me was, uh, was the real deal. I remember, um, Medal of Honor Allied Assault on my computer. Uh, I can remember just calling my dad in all the time. I must have showed him the, the Normandy D-Day beach invasion like 17 times. I was like, Dad, check this out. Uh, just look that scene up. It's absolutely insane. Normandy D-Day invasion, Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Back on track, Call of Duty. Just, you know, we love, our, we love our spectrums here on Huber Hype. You know, you got your battlefield tactical teamwork over here. And over here, you've got your quick 
cat-like reflexes in Call of Duty. Just on edge, hyper-focused the entire time. They are around you, they are above you, below you, next to you. If you drop your guard for a millisecond, you're dead. Going back to Call of Duty 2, that's when I really got into that multiplayer, uh, specifically Bree Court. Brad Ellis knows exactly what I'm talking about right now. Uh, the weapons and the technology were limiting. So there were these bolt-action rifles that were just part of the game. You know, it wasn't all about going in with SMGs, like what Call of Duty has kind of become. You know, the close quarter, find the best SMG in the meta and just go around with that thing, just spraying bullets. Call of Duty 2 had these open maps that really played to sniping and to bolt action rifles. There were still machine guns, you know, the Thompson, the BAR, but the maps had areas where those weapons were strong or weak. So in a wide open field, I'm gonna take the rifle. But if we're going like city style, home kicking down doors, we're gonna go with a Thompson or, or a BAR, a machine gun. And I loved just feeling like Jackson in a bell tower. There's something incredibly satisfying about hitting a guy with a bolt action and then just hearing that douche, just high powered rifle. Intense. So we got, we got Modern Warfare and it completely changes the game. I mean, I didn't know your, your JRPG was now in my modern first person shooter. We've got experience points, we got leveling up, we got earning, earning perks and, and weapon skins and all this. It was just this carrot on the stick that I became obsessed with. Just wanted more, just wanted to level up, level up, level up. Then Modern Warfare 2 comes out it almost ruined my life. You're thinking, why? What did it do? I'll tell you what it did. It added a 25 kill streak tactical nuke. Okay, you get 25 kills in a row without dying, and you can launch a freaking nuke that kills everyone on the map, including yourself, and automatically wins the match for your team. You have no idea how long I tried to get that 25 kill streak. Here we are 10 years later. Ask me, did I ever hit it? Did I ever get the 25 kill streak? No. So that's it, competitive multiplayer first person shooter is just a hell of a genre. Intimidating actually. I get nervous, I hop into a Halo match, I got sweaty palms, my hands are just like this when I put the controller down, just locked. Just pure intensity, but um, you know, there, there is something very special about that genre, about whether you team up with a buddy, to take down an enemy base, whether you're a mile across the map and you snipe a guy in the brain, or if you just get creative and you throw C4 on your Jeep and you run it into a tank, it is just a place of escape, a place where you can put your skills to the test against people from around the world. It's a beautiful thing. So last week we talked about monsters. Jolly. Love monsters. Love Halloween. It's over though. It's done. Now we got Thanksgiving coming up. Christmas after that. That's pretty good. And the uh, triple threat of holidays. Got some comments about some monsters though. Exclusively from YouTube this time. It's a first for Huber Hype. The neglect is over. Officially. Uh, first up, Vishnu. Huber, I never hear anyone show any love for Shadow Man. The creature and sound design was terrifying, especially when you arrived to Underworld. Game was a masterpiece for the N64 days. It was my first bloodborne -ish style of game. Good times. So, Shadow Man, that was a hell of a game. I loved it. I had a poster in my room, actually. But uh, 
could never get through it. It was just too hard for me. Got like halfway through and could just never beat it. I remember I was just pulling my hair out at that game. Uh, brutally challenging and confusing game. Would love to go back to it now though. Uh, Sir Dog Uni. Oh my god, I was only 10 years old when I saw for the first time The Nurses. Silent Hill ruined me. Absolutely disturbing. The Nurses. Uh, definitely giving them a shout out now. Uh, didn't mention them last week. Filippo Gabolo, Bloodborne is the undisputed king of terrifying monster design. P.S. Huber, would you say that a Shenmue Saga HD collection would be the only remaster capable of surpassing the Nathan Drake collection for you? First of all, you know how to get on Huber Hype. Because in one comment, you say Bloodborne, Shenmue, Nathan Drake Collection, well done. Uh, it would surpass the collection. It absolutely would. Because because the leap. Because because we ha we had PS3 Uncharted one two three. I mean Shenmue one and two. We're talking Dreamcast. The leap to an HD remaster would be massive. Lastly, long comment here. Excuse me if I do not know how to pronounce your name, Bartolomej. Cesiluk. I butchered it, I'm sorry. Hello, Hugh. We're started to watch the show lately. Never had a chance to check it earlier. Anyway, not worried because I literally swallowed all episodes there are on YouTube. Thank you very much. Binged it like Breaking Bad. Regarding your last question about the monsters in games, the topic is too wide to select just one. Yeah, Huber Hype, it's a bitch. Can never talk about everything. Things are getting laid to the wayside. But since it would be appropriate to do that, here I am. I was never as terrified during playing the game as I was when playing Alien Isolation. Not only because an alien has the potential to genocide the whole globe, but because you can't predict these feckers' behavior. You can naively go to the air duct to hide because, hey, that's what we all do in the games when it comes to hiding, right? No, sir. He'll get in there eventually. You just wait. Sooner or later, he'll check all the corners, all the ducks, all the lockers, and even under the table in this room! Just thinking about this sends shivers down my spine. Freaked me out, man. We gotta get the hell out of here. So that's it for the show. Coming up on GameTrailers.com this week, we did not have a chance to talk about uh, Halo and Overwatch that I mentioned in the beginning, but we are doing just plays on both of those games. Be sure to check those out for our uh, reactions, comments, concerns, and uh, just a great discussion. Also, I've been plugging away on a WWE 2K16 review. There's no embargo, so I can share my thoughts if the review's not up yet. It's good. And that is gonna do it. Uh, this is an intense topic to talk about. Competitive multiplayer first person shooters. Say it five times fast. Uh, let me know some of your favorites. I wanna see at least one comment on Unreal Tournament. I know you're out there. I wanna read it. Let me know. Here is my Twitter. Post in the comments there or YouTube comments. And uh, we'll just talk about some of the greatest games there ever was. See you next week. It's time for Hebrews 2. Sure, it's not Dragon Quest 8 or Dragon Quest 10 or even Dragon Quest 11, but it's the next best thing. Dragon Quest Heroes, The World Trees Woe, and The Blight Below. I don't like Muso games. I tried Dynasty Warriors 8. I threw my controller down and uttered the words, no thanks. But that's not the case with Dragon Quest Heroes. Complete jolly Dragon Quest aesthetic, characters, monsters, and music collide in a fast paced Muso game for the ages. Check it out, support the franchise in the West so we can get more Eastern goodies.
I'm sick of this, Dr. Shatterclaw. I'm ready to go fight. Your training, close talker, is incomplete. It is complete. I've never lost a match. Nothing can stand up to my might. The neck must be stronger. Strong as the trunk of the quebracho tree. Axe breaker. Nothing on this planet, especially some stupid little tree, can handle my power and fury. I'm done with you, and I will go get that belt and bring the Attitude Era back where it belongs. Close talker, wait. He is lost.